Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a couple of couch potatoes in love that love reacting to some Castlevania. So this time we were potatoes, but we had like the little Dracula cape on. That's big. And of course, little teeth. Yeah. So this is Castlevania season three, episode three. And you can get early ad free access to our reactions if you want to get further ahead. Uh, we are a month ahead on your YouTube edits and even further ahead on our full watch along reactions uh, on Patreon. And the link is in the description of this video, along with a playlist for all of our reactions to Castlevania. We have reactions, we have playlists for all the franchises and uh, shows and movies and stuff that we react to on this channel. Go ahead and check that out. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So, what's next? I mean, I suppose we could take a break? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fat thing living at the bottom of the last village as well. And the night creatures on the flying goats. <laughs> flying goats? Flying goats. What was... Disturbing. <laughs> the shot on a farm, Cypher. And their ship was on fire. <laughs> Burning devil goat turd <laughs> from the sky. <laughs> you weren't going to say disturbing, were you? You were going to say fun. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god, so much fun! <laughs> really? The most fun I've ever had in my life! That's to say, I think she's horny now. <laughs> Thinking about it. This is nice, I suppose. You're bored. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not complaining or anything. <laughs> used to sleeping under trees. Sleeping in the wagon. So we should get in the wagon and roll on out of- Roll on out of here? That's what we do. We roll out and hit the road and fight nasty hovering death goats that open their flaming bowels upon the innocent. <laughs> Belmadis and her dancing bear. <laughs> do you know that some people have sex with them? <laughs> so I've heard. <laughs> yes, he has. Some food for the road. Really? Callback. <laughs> I admit it. I do. You and me. We're doing good thing. Lindenfeld is starting to give me the creeps. Mm -hmm. Really worship Dracula. They do accompany me. Sure, creepy guy. For tea. I like tea. <laughs> I don't. don't. Yep. <laughs> All right. Who exactly are you? This Wizard. is Trevor Belmont. You're a wizard, Cypher. Fighter of demons. You could have told me that yesterday. <laughs> the local monks made me think that perhaps our names shouldn't be said out loud. We killed him. <laughs> really? Really? Oh. Hmm. You're a speaker magician. In the flesh. What do you want? But what I need to know is what's going on in the Priory. Well, the place is apparently full of lunatics. What do you need to know? Mm-hmm. Lindenfeld was hit by a pack of night creatures. Oh my god! Oh! Oh, he's so happy though. Look at his tail. <laughs> night creature butt. <laughs> night creature butt. My men at arms wipe their weapons shit to make the wounds sick. Yep. It's old army tactics. There are reasons why this is more than a wide spot in the road, Belmont. Okay. So much for that. What was it, church? Building? Yeah, because that were all the... They had all the women and children hiding? Hope not. And then... Prior. I couldn't imagine even a single monster could have killed everyone inside so... It was talking to them. Oh. The 
ray stopped. I couldn't tell you if the pieces added up to the entire beast. They just looked, well, broken. They just dropped the remains on the street and went back inside. The people of the town wanted to give thanks for God's mercy, and Sala wouldn't allow them into the Priory's hall. A priest, covered in blood, couldn't stop shaking. The monks took him in. It's been happening every few days ever since. I need to know why the Priory in my town is attracting damaged, frightening people. When you arrived last night, I took you for adventurers. Chance <laughs> for a fair payment. Adventurers. <laughs> But you are a speaker. You are heroes to this country and its people. Hmm. I believe you will help me because these are dangerous times. We're not heroes, Judge. Uh, well, I'm not. She is. That's why I said I think you like this. Also, queer until they do as I damn well tell Oh my god. Okay. But the monks are armed, have the advantage of anonymity. I'm not looking at you so far. <laughs> you like looking at me. Because if you do, you'll crack <laughs> like an egg. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's so happy. Well, at least he offered to pay our rent while we're here. <laughs> Investigator. Hmm. All right. Check out Isaac. I know. I'm about to say, Bucky, you make it tough to cuddle. <laughs> I literally have a dog on each arm right now. Do you partake of alcohol? <laughs> I do not. The spinning around kind or the self-flagellating kind? I imagine it hurts. It can't be blamed for stopping. I've been hit by people. It's not the same thing at all. It frees the mind to focus. So why did you stop? I cannot find myself. Mm. I cannot pray. Tell me the story, Isaac. The night is long and see Dracula. Oh, this should be good. <laughs> Dracula, who wants to kill everyone in Wallachia? So working for Dracula was like suicide the long way around. <laughs> and I suspect a fresh start would be good for the world. Present company accepted, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you wouldn't be boring. I cannot, however, and you're not in Wallachia. What happened? Mm -hmm. Dracula threw me to the desert through a magic mirror. That don't sound like someone who wants to kill all the people of the earth. There were other vampires conspiring against him. What he will do to Hector? He just can't get the stuff anymore. Believe me, I know. And now you're sailing back to Europe to find Dracula? I have other reasons to return. I was given this by a man in Tunis. <laughs> it showed me that the other human in the court is being kept prisoner by one of the vampires who schemed against Dracula. <laughs> mm -hmm. He said it was in exchange for saving him from hell when he died, because they were full of hatred and fear. Did he laugh when he said it? Can't you save people from hell? I'm a forge master. That's quite a trick. It is a skill. It requires a human connection. Not this magic. But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and its doors will rattle in the wind. God lifts the damned from hell in his mercy to enact them. That's... Intense. Ooh, I thought I'd heard every story, but that's new to me. And other things too, I'll mark. I have some other skill. Where will you go? Styria. Home to Camilla, who rules that region. And then what? If you kill him. What will you do then? Take up your Dracula's cars and kill all the people in the world? Have you ever heard this maxim? You become part of someone else's. Mm. That's because I invented it. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, guy. I have a knife, right? <laughs> Why leave out a dead vampire story? Dracula's story, as you put it, is right and good. And yet yesterday, a man gave you a gift and made a joke. 
authority trying to run you and your beast is out of town. Mm -hmm. Do you deny our species is cruel, Captain? Give me both. I've been cruel. It's a cruel, but maybe we could be better too. But you end human kindness too. Love? No more jokes, no more gifts, no more. Why would a man with all your fantastic knowledge <laughs> revenge is good? Bastards need punishing. You become a ruler of a place, Isaac. I do not. You can lead, Isaac. Just like you lead your beasties up there. I would like more water. Isaac, the forge master. My gift, given freely. Good job, Captain. Mm-hmm. Maybe. That'd be nice. Maybe some clothes. I need a chair. Maybe she'll bathe him, like clean his sores. I also need you to leave before I decide to kill you for keeping our guest in such a manner. <laughs> Run. Fuck off. <laughs> Was that for my benefit? Telling the guard off for doing his job, so that I'll think you're sympathetic. You like to play with your food. Oh, <laughs> Carmilla does, certainly. Striga just kills her food. Who are they? They're all in council. Marana is the organizer. Striga is the warrior. I'm Lenore. It's a pleasure to meet you, Hector. You've met Carmilla. She's the spark. We see the present. <laughs> She's the nightmare. Mm hmm She knew that too. Do you like something to eat? No. With extra goodness in it. Hmm. Mm, oops. <laughs> Would you like one? No, blackberries are disgusting. The seeds get in my teeth. Blackberries are tasty. But the seeds do get in your tongue. Oh, you got a raspberry in there. Sold. A little treat for a dog. Mm -hmm. Lenore. Thank you, Lenore. I can call the guard and ask him to get you some sprinkles. Hm? That's quite the picnic you have in there. Oh, we eat. It's the blood that gives us our essential nourishment, of course. But we enjoy all the good things of life. It'd be silly not to, wouldn't it? Why live forever if you're not going to live well? Piece of chicken? Thank you. You're very welcome, Hector. She's good. Oh. Yep. I know I can't kill you, but you call the guard, tell him to unlock this fucking door, and we'll just see how fucking well you live. <laughs> Ooh. No longer the nice approach. Not going so well. Wasn't that fun? I'm a diplomat, Hector. I make peace. Striga wants to kill you when she thinks about you at all. And Marana wants to torture you. I make peace. And because of that, people think I'm soft. You won't make that mistake again, will you? <laughs> Yep, Jessica Treat. Lenore is a fascinating character. Mm. I think I'm still trying to wrap my head around what she was doing. Cause her initial her initial tactic, I'm like, I totally get this. This mm -hmm. is this is the good cop. This is the Yeah. You know, can I get you a cup of coffee? Would you like a donut? Like, you know, um, so she comes in and, and her agenda is to appear friendly, appear mm -hmm. like an ally, appear like somebody who can help him. But the whole facade was dropped 
when he threatened her. So you can't, like, once you've stripped the mask away, you really can't put it back on. Yeah. And she tried at the end, sort of, to, like, return to I make peace. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to kind of wrap my head around her, her bigger her bigger tactic now because kicking the shit out of him is really not something you can walk back. No. And she, I mean, same thing. She looks at him as a pet as well. Uh, and someone to tame and um, make heal uh, carrot and stick. And she tried the carrot at first, but then, yeah, as soon as you bust out that stick, it's like, uh, okay, well, I guess I can take your kindness or get the shit kicked out of me. I, mean, I guess I'll take the kindness, but at the same time, it's not going to earn you any trust or earn you like, he's actually yeah. not going to help you out. Like, okay, fine, he'll be nice to you so like, he can get some food and everything, but he's not going to want to help you. And if he doesn't help you, then you'll beat the shit out of him cold. Like, and that's things back to where he was. Um, and Hector, Hector seems like a person that has at least some resolve. Uh, and I was surprised at first when he was like, I'm like, okay, wow. She broke him down pretty easily. Like, it didn't take that much work. I'm like, oh, okay, no, he was playing along too. Um, so then it made more sense. Uh, absolutely love Belmont and Saifa in this. Um, Saifa is just, she's so fun. She is. Now, I mean, she was fun in uh, other seasons, but I feel like she's like, she's amped it up more. She seems like just extremely happy now. I mean, I think she's in her element. Yeah. This is, she's doing her dream job. She's all loved up. She's like, life is great right now. I mean, sure, like, the world's on fire and they're night crawling beasts that are out to kill everybody mm -hmm. and the church is nuts and now we got these priory people but like life is wonderful life is grand yeah. <laughs> um and i i loved the moment where she was like look at me belmont he's like no she's like because you know you'll crack he's like yes i just that that exchange because he does keep such like a serious face mm -hmm. and a serious demeanor but to see how she's able to break through that and like she's one of the few yeah. people who can get around that tough plate of armor he's got on. Um, that was just a really, I mean, that was a tender moment that we got to be witness of and playful and fun and flirty. And I, I thought that was fantastic. Going back to, to Hector and uh, Lenore, Lenore just for a split second here, um, you know, you talked about Hector having resolve. This really did show us he does very much want to live. Yeah. So, however that shapes up in terms of what their plan is for him, um, he's clearly not at the point where he has given up on life. Yeah. Um, and for Lenore, the other the other piece that I wanted to just kind of highlight was not just that she treats him like a pet in terms of like fetch mm -hmm. with a blackberry, but she's walking out of the cell. She actively steps on him with her boot. <laughs> which really just hammers home that she, her her point of view and perspective of him is very much identical to Camilla's, even if mm -hmm. she was coming in with a different tactic. Hector has misjudged people before and been foolish in terms of how he's, if it was Game of Thrones, you'd say how he's played the game. Yeah. Um, unlikely to make that mistake again. So I'm sure he is very much clocking every bit of the interaction from what's said to what's physically done to the body language to everything and and so you know for her to go so far as to quite honestly stomp on him after beating him up pretty strong statement you uh, asked before in another episode um why the they thought that um dracula's wife was gonna go to hell the priory or whatever mm -hmm. maybe they thought about that i was just thinking this one like I don't know, like, what came up it was, it was came up when Belmont and um, Cypher were talking to the, the priest or whatever, the, the head of the town. The Maybe judge. They, the judge. Maybe they thought that she was going to hell because she loved Dracula so much that, like, she would just choose to go to hell to be with him. Mm. Um, so that thought crossed my mind. Um, and because that's what I do, I, I go to hell for you. I don't, I don't know why you're in hell, but like I go to hell. Because all the best people are down there. Yeah. We're having a party. <laughs> Love the scene between uh, the captain and Isaac. Yes. Uh, he just dropped some great wisdom there. And yeah, you know, it is it's it is one of those things, especially when people are on a, a quest for revenge. What then? What happens when you finally get your revenge? If someone could have spoken that to Dracula, 
Mm. Yes, punish the people that deserve it, which is what we want from Dracula. But then make the rest of your you know life is like, it's like teach kindness to the humans and teach um, you know kindness kindness to people and like what it's like for Dracula, just like you know you have all this knowledge and teach it because that is what your wife wanted and that's what she was trying to do was trying to help people and, and better and, and better people and better humanity. Dracula was on that path and then he lost her. And then, you know, he lost his, he lost his compass. And he, and um, so Isaac is kind of, or uh, the captain's kind of being that for Isaac is kind of being his, his compass and trying to show him that, okay, yes, get your revenge, kill people that deserve to be killed. But then after that, leave some, some room to make the world what you want it to be without like, murdering everybody and saying like yes there is hating people but showing kindness like we said before in the last episode showing kindness is just like you know paying it forward and um trying to make the world a better place that way instead of just giving in and saying well everyone's a shitty person so i'm gonna be a shitty person and that's just the way you know that's just the way life is so i'm a couple things from the scene with Isaac and the captain that I love, but like to build on this point, it's funny how like the desire is you have so much knowledge, teach people not to be assholes. <laughs> yeah. And and I was sitting here, I was thinking about it, I was like, but humanity's default setting is not to be an asshole. We have to learn to be assholes, mm -hmm. generally speaking. Like, and it... I was thinking about kids and then I was thinking about when we were in San Diego for mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. So Bucky, um, and oh, you yeah. will you will all learn about this in our vlog as we go on a journey of training with Bucky, but he gets very afraid of new environments, new situations, mm -hmm. new people, new animals. And so we went for the first time to our uh, brother and sister-in-law's home they have a little girl, Margo, our niece. And Margo is kind of afraid of dogs. Yeah. And she doesn't have much interaction with them. Exactly. And Bucky has not had really any interaction with children. So Bucky yeah. is kind of afraid of children. And so over the course of Thanksgiving Day, it was very interesting to watch the two of them keep their distance and be afraid of each other. Mm -hmm. And then start to observe each other. And by the by like late afternoon or evening. Margot is very sweetly trying to make friends with Bucky by showing him her toys, mm. bringing him her toys to play with. She even snuck food to him, which caused a little bit of a kerfuffle because nobody knew what she had tried to feed him and got a little bit panicked. And so then she started crying because she was yeah. so worried that she'd done something wrong. Um, but then she didn't like when Bucky was in the crate while we were eating because she felt like Bucky was sad and upset. And so she didn't like that anymore. And so it was just interesting to watch how the two of them have warmed up to each other over the course of this day and to see how Margot's instincts were to do everything right to make a friend. Yeah. Share food, share possessions, show kindness, try to pet him. And by the end of it, they were friends and it was great. Yeah. But like, that's all the more point that our default setting when we're young is to want to be friends, to be nice to each other. I mean, sure, kids will be dicks. They'll like, they will, <laughs> they will take each other's toys and they will like hit each other because they're still learning. And like, yes, kids will do dickish things over the course of their tiny little lives. But the point is, that's not the norm. That's not the default. Um, and so I was just kind of thinking about this sort of like theme that's coming up now that humanity is like, hey, you supernatural creatures with all your knowledge, teach us how not to be terrible. Mm -hmm. Teach us how to unlearn the terrible things that we have learned and adopted for ourselves as the human race. The other thing that I was going to say about the captain that I loved was his the comment that he made about how if you don't have your own story, you will live your life in someone yeah. else's. Great line. And I thought that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Because kind of when you look at like very successful people or people who seem really happy mm -hmm. and, and that those two are not the same thing just for clarity but when you look at it they're very often people who have a sense of self a sense of purpose and they know what makes them happy and that's what they've gone after yeah so like 
they have crafted their story. They've discovered what their what their wants and desires are, and then they've gone out and they've made their story. And sure, it'll overlap with other people's, and there'll be other characters who come in and out, and there'll be characters in other mm. people's stories. But the point is, like, their life has been crafted around their story versus being crafted around someone else's because they've never figured out what do I want or what don't I want? Like, I don't know, I guess I'm good at this thing. So I'll do this thing for and like help like serve this person because that's what I'm good at. And that's a lot of times how people get in toxic relationships is that uh, they'll make their lives like built around the other person and 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 making them happy like in, in what their their life is. Whereas like, you know, the best relationships are like, yeah, you're you are in, in your own in your own story and they're in their own story and then like you just come together and create a new story together um instead of just being in somebody else's story and like trying to make them happy and like and it's not saying that that's always going to be like a, a end up in a toxic relationship but like sometimes that you know then if that person you get break up then like you feel like you've got nothing because you're you, that person was your your world i mean and um you know i was thinking about that like i'm just like i'm like well yeah well if, you know bethany ever like divorce me or whatever i'd be like that would that would be my world but at the same time but there's a difference between saying like oh this person is my world like i love them so much they are yeah. my world because they mean that much to me and then there's like no but they literally are my world like i yeah. do not know how to function without them i don't have a, an identity or outside of them. yeah outside of them like so I, I think sometimes you know we've talked about light and shadow side um some of these phrases that we use as we romanticize things and and as we mm -hmm. talk about love and stuff, they capture the feeling, mm -hmm. but aren't necessarily supposed to be taken literally. And the shadow side is when they get taken literally and somebody's like, no, but in order to be in love, I, I should like, the other person needs to be my world and yeah. nothing matters outside of them. It's like, no, no, that's not mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> too literal. Back it up a little bit. <laughs> We're going for the feels, not for the actual definition. Yeah. So you had brought up the Priory mm -hmm. and I loved your your theory. I mean, of course, Hopeless Romantic, I, I love that theory, um, that Dracula's wife chose to be there and wait for him, sort of like how you imagine, you know, mm -hmm. I'll wait for you at the pearly gates. Like that whole idea yep. of like, I'm waiting for you on the other side. But part of the plot thing, if I if I did understand this correctly, and I'm not entirely sure that I did, but the Nightcrawler went to the Priory and spoke to them. Yep. So when they said Dracula's wife is in hell, I'm now thinking that maybe that wasn't a figure of speech and they actually concretely somehow know this. And I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Like the romantic in me likes your theory of it, but yeah. I'm also like, she was such a good woman. And like, even when the church comes and is horrific to her, she's like, she forgive, them. yeah. Yeah, she's like, I mean, it's that whole like, I don't know, Jesus on the cross, like forgive them, they know not what they do. Yeah, pretty much, like um, that, that was exactly what I thought of when she was saying that. And so, I mean, to have that level of goodness when people are burning you at the stake, I'm gonna say that that's incredibly rare. I would yeah. not be that good. I'd be no. like, fuck all these people. Smite <laughs> these motherfuckers. Very much so. So I'm just like, if somebody that good is winding up in hell, it had better be by choice. Then we all are. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Yeah, we're so all totally doomed. But I mean, it's gotta be by choice. It, it cannot be by a like, she was damned. It mm -hmm. has to have been choice. Let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And if you want early ad free access to our reactions to Castlevania, <laughs> check out the description of this video. We got a link to Patreon there. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for Castlevania season three, episode three. But just keep in mind that our reaction is definitely not definitive. <laughs>